Hello and welcome to another video by Haste Computer Repair. Today we're taking a look at the Lenovo ThinkPad T470S for use in 2023 and onward. So this laptop shipped with a Intel Core i5-7300U CPU with a base frequency of 2.6 GHz and a max turbo frequency of 3.5 GHz. Although it is a 2-core, 4-thread CPU, it's really not that bad. Here I have 16 GB of DDR4 memory. For storage, we have a Patriot M.2 P310 240GB NVMe SSD. We have a Intel dual band wireless AC8265 Wi-Fi card, also featuring Bluetooth 4.1. And here we have Intel HD Graphics 620. One benefit of this generation of ThinkPads is that we have the T470S's uh, shipping with 1080p display panels. There's also versions with 1440p display panels. Now this keyboard is characteristic of many generations of ThinkPads now. I do not mind it at all myself, and it also features two tiers of backlight. I'm a fan of this touchpad. It's featured on my own uh, ThinkPad T480, and it's very intuitive, it feels nice, and it has the three buttons up top here so you can easily navigate using the touch point up here and use your thumb and pinky or ring finger to uh, use your left and right click buttons. Also included is the fingerprint scanner if you want that added security feature. On the left side input output, we have input for the power adapter, USB 3.1, grill for air exhaust, microphone and headphone input, and a multi-card SD card reader. On the right I.O. we have a optional smart card reader, USB Type-C, USB 3.1, an HDMI port, USB 3.0 always on for powering things like your cell phone so long as the laptop is on or powered with the power adapter. RJ45 Ethernet port, SIM card reader, and the version of the Kensington lock. Also featured is this port for a docking bay. What's even more common is using the USB Type-C for a hub that would offer extra display options and USB ports. The display panel cover is a carbon fiber reinforced polymer hybrid, bottom being magnesium. So general use of this laptop for things like web browsing is going to be quite nice, especially with a solid internet connection. You can get to looking up various web pages quite fast and I personally didn't really ex experience any kind of real stuttering or dips in performance, especially with the 16 gigabytes of RAM and use of the M.2 SSD. The stock stereo speakers are not terrible. Of course, you could always connect a Bluetooth speaker. Now, if you do plan on servicing the laptop, one thing that you can do is disable the internal battery and BIOS. And we have to do this because, of course, we cannot remove the battery without removing the back cover. So we'll turn on the laptop and we'll hit enter once you see the Lenovo splash screen. And once you see this menu, we can hit F1 to enter BIOS. And now once you're into BIOS, you can navigate over to config, down to power, and down to disable built-in battery. And system will be powered down. If you select yes, do you want to proceed? Yes. So let's take a look at the inside of this laptop. All you'll need for this is a Phillips head screwdriver and something like a plastic guitar pick or this plastic tool from an iFixit kit. All right, so here's the inside. And as you can see here, we have one battery. Up here we have the second battery, and you'll notice that there's no room for a 2.5 inch hard drive or SSD in this laptop. We do have this uh, NVMe slot right here, which we currently have the 240 gigabyte Patriot P310 SSD installed. There's also an M.2 slot right here, and you can either install a WWAN card 
or you can install a second SSD. What I have here is a M.2 SATA 3 SSD by a brand called Transcend. You can get it in various capacities and you could install this here and it could act as a second uh, storage device. You could set it up as cache to allow the entire system to move a little bit faster or you could set it up as a Windows or Linux whatever operating system boot drive and have your NVMe or M.2 down here be set up solely as storage. Or of course you could dual boot Linux, Windows, etc. So some interesting options. Over here we have one available DIMM slot for your DDR4 RAM. There is eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM already soldered onto the motherboard. So any additional RAM that you do add in this slot will of course either double that etc. So right now I have a 8 gigabyte DDR4 2400 megahertz silicon power RAM stick installed equaling 16 gigabytes of 2400 megahertz RAM total. Uh, plenty for this system I would say. Up here is where the CPU is and I've already removed these four screws here to clean and apply new thermal paste as well as clean the CPU fan. Over here we have the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card. All right, so we have Fortnite loaded up, and I noticed that in order to play this game smooth, you do need to lower the resolution. So I set it at 1440 by 900, 16 by 10 resolution, activated VSync. I set the frame limit to 60 frames per second. I don't think we're really going to worry about getting over that in performance mode, of course, and set everything to a mixture of medium and low. Once the world gets a chance to load and all the shaders get a chance to load, um, at this resolution it becomes quite playable. All right, so just starting the match, we're actually getting up to 60 frames per second at some points, um, idling. Basically, right now we're getting anywhere from mid 30s to 60 frames per second solid. Here we go, somebody's trying to shoot me. Right, let's see if I can get this guy while swimming in the water. I feel like it's a bot. Where the heck did he go? There he is. Hey, maybe it's that same guy. Let's see if we can get him. All right. Well, as you can see, this game is 100% playable at this resolution. So I'm pretty impressed, I'll say that much. And I'm actually having a pretty good time playing this. It is what it is, but hey, it's gaming on a budget. All right, so now I have Dead by Daylight loaded up. And right now I have it set to low resolution at 65%, which is quite low. Um, 16 by 9 aspect ratio off and I decided to stay full screen because right now we're idling at 35, 36 frames per second and that's not too bad. I'm going to try playing in full screen resolution and if it doesn't work out we can always adjust that and turn full screen off. Alright so here we go. Um, my goal was basically to get at least 30 frames per second without too much stuttering. Uh, so far, we're exceeding that. Right now at idle, I'm repairing this generator and we're reaching 4750 frames per second, 51. That's not bad. So yes, again, the resolution is a little bit low, but honestly, I'm gaming and it's going all right. All right, so I had to load up at least one game where we didn't have to worry about lowering the resolution and that would be Left 4 Dead 2. All right, so this game looks great on a 1080p display. It's performing really well, just like I thought it would. Uh, we're over 100 frames per second. And yeah, dipping into the 90s. Obviously, that's 100%, if not 110% fine for playing Left 4 Dead 2. Uh, we get down to the 70s or so, but I mean, look at this game, it looks great. Still a lot of fun to play. Um, you gotta think about linking up with friends with this one again. Well, I'm getting surrounded by this horde. 
All right, so I thought I'd try another higher quality game out just to see what would happen, and I chose Stray. So again, I lowered the resolution quite a bit and changed it to 1366 by 768. Um, but as you can see, we're running pretty smooth. It's over 30 frames per second, reaching into the 40s, sometimes up to the 50s, but not too much. And I kind of forget what to do in this room now, but anyways, the point is, is that it is running smooth and Stray is another game you can play. So would I recommend the Lenovo ThinkPad T470S in 2023 and onward? Most definitely. I think this is a solid budget choice for many people, including students, professionals. Uh, for me, it would definitely suit my work environment, uh, accessing Office 365, uh, networking with people, video calls, etc., uh, using it for educational purposes. I could also edit the same uh, 1080p video that I do for these videos. That about wraps up my review of the T470S. I hope that you enjoyed watching the video and I hope you learned something about the laptop and hopefully it will help you decide if it's a good fit for you. So as always, thanks a lot for watching and I hope you have a great day.